minus 20 seconds to launch, and the launch command has been issued. Second umbilical tower now separating. Five, four, Start. three, two, one. And liftoff, liftoff of the Soyuz 29 spacecraft that is taking Don Pettit, Oleg Kononenko, and Andre Kuypers to the International Space Station. First stage performance. The Soyuz is delivering 102 tons of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length, 24 feet in diameter, and it's burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. All data shows a normal launch and climb into orbit. Soyuz rocket in stable flight. At the one minute, 10 second mark, velocity will be 1,100 miles an hour. Visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control reporting to flight director Heather, Heather Rare that all systems are working well as the Soyuz continues its climb into orbit. Four strap on boosters uh, being jettisoned. He's uh, completing their job and dropping away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. Uh, launch vehicle of parameters within the norm. Uh, the loads are increasing. 110 seconds, uh, your pitch and roll within the norm. We have first stage separation, so he's traveling at uh, 3,300 miles an hour. The escape tower and the launch shroud have now been jettisoned. And we are at the 2 minute and 40 second mark of this flight to the International Space Station aboard Soyuz 29 and TM TMA-03 in the spacecraft. All parameters of the launch vehicle and the spacecraft are normal. There is a feeling as though the, the rocket is around the, around the launch vehicle and uh, we have a control launch indicator, control distance indicator. 170. Three minutes into the flight of the uh, Soyuz to the space station, uh, it's traveling at a speed of about 4,700 miles an hour. The Soyuz core stage is performing as expected. It is 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter, and a single engine with four fuel chambers is providing 96 tons of thrust for three minutes and 28 seconds. Well, still it's 160 seconds, everything is within the norm and uh, the parameters of the... These are live in-cabin views from inside the Soyuz spacecraft. We can see Don Pettit and Oleg Kononenko to the left and right as uh, they uh, are enjoying a smooth ride into orbit. Light. 230. And uh, stabilization is uh, normal. 240 seconds in flight. The All systems working normally, 240 seconds into the flight. 250. Uh, your pitch and roll within the norm. Copy. 
Roll pitch and yaw thr thrusters uh, working nominally, controlling the orientation of the vehicle as it continues its launch into orbit. Nominal flight and the crew is doing well. We're at 4 minutes 45 seconds. The core booster is uh, about to burn out and separate at an altitude of 105 miles. Once that core stage has completed its job, the third stage will ignite. Two hundred ninety seconds. And uh, we have separation of the third stage. The visiting vehicle officer reporting to Flight Director Heather Rarick here in Mission Control that the uh, core stage has separated. The core stage engine uh, now finished and dropping away. So is About uh, four minutes of powered flight remaining. The Soyuz is being propelled by a single engine of the Soyuz's third stage. Uh, thank you. That engine providing 30 tons of thrust and is going to burn for four minutes and two seconds. Vehicle are fine. 330 seconds in flight. Uh, the systems of the third stage are doing well, and the crew is doing well as well, and it is 340 seconds in flight of parameters of the control system for the launch vehicle. Six minutes into the launch of this Soyuz spacecraft, and we're getting live in-cabin views. This is a good look at European Space Agency astronaut uh, Andre Kuipers from the, the Netherlands on the uh, upper right portion of your screen, and on the lower left in the center seat is uh, Commander Oleg Kononenko. Uh, pitch roll and your nominal. All Soyuz systems working well during the climb to orbit. The uh, structural parameters of the launch vehicle are nominal. Copy. 380 seconds in flight. Uh, stage 3 is operating stable. 390 seconds. The control system's parameter of the launch vehicle nominal. 400 seconds in flight. A stabilization of the launch vehicle within the norm. Everything is fine on board and the crew is doing well. 410 seconds nominal flight. Four hundred twenty. Coming up on the 7 minute 30 second mark of the uh, launch of this Soyuz 29 spacecraft to the International Space Station. Spacecraft's uh, velocity is now almost 13,500 miles an hour. Stage, third stage nominal. And, uh, third stage engines continuing to operate normally. The nominal stabilization of the vehicle. Copy. 450 seconds. Uh, loads continue. Eight minutes since the launch of the Soyuz spacecraft and three explorers headed for the International Space Station. All systems working normally. Power portion of the flight is nearly over. All the third stage operating nominally. Ninety seconds. Vehicle stabilization nominal. Control panel parameters nominal. Loads continue increasing. One hundred ten. Five hundred twenty seconds in flight. Increase of vibration. Re repress. Okay, we wish you a great flight. Thank you very much. Alex, 
This is Bob Bob Skin. Can you hear me? And the third stage of the uh, vehicle has now separated. The three crew members uh, shaking hands and congratulations of a successful launch into orbit. Thank you very much. Now that the uh, third stage has completed delivery of the Soyuz to orbit and the module has separated, a series of pre programmed commands are going to be executed to prepare the Soyuz for orbital operations. These uh, stored commands are called time tag commands, and they'll allow many of the Soyuz systems to automatically activate through onboard computers at precise times that are stored in those computers. That uh, third stage uh, single liquid fueled engine has shut down and dropped away at an altitude of about 125 miles. And it is performing an avoidance maneuver by opening a valve in its liquid oxygen tank to get it away from the Soyuz spacecraft. Again, uh, spacecraft separation confirmed, and the Soyuz capsule and crew inside are now safely in orbit. The spacecraft is uh, executing those pre-programmed commands to deploy the antennas and solar rays that will provide power for the two days of flight to the space station. Soyuz orbiting at an altitude of about 143 by 118 statute miles. That orbit is going to be raised systematically over the course of the next two days, putting it in close proximity to the International Space Station. Control of spacecraft from here on will be overseen from the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, but will be closely followed by the team here in Mission Control Houston. We're continuing to receive live views from inside the Soyuz TMA-03M capsule as uh, Commander Ola Kononenko in the center seat and board engineer Andre Kuypers uh, on the left seat uh, mark off their checklists after a successful launch. Again, today's liftoff uh, occurred uh, on time at uh, 7.16 a.m. Central Time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, uh, lighting up the night as a uh, frigid set of temperatures uh, produced uh, an eerie fog around the spacecraft until its eg engines ignited and uh, lit the uh, night sky uh, with a bright yellow glow. These three spacefarers, uh, Kuypers, Kononenko, and uh, NASA astronaut Don Pettit, heading for a holiday reunion aboard the International Space Station. With their uh, new crewmates, Commander Dan Burbank and uh, Flight Engineers Anton Shkaplarov and Anatoly Ivanishin, who have been on board as part of the Expedition 30 crew uh, since uh, their arrival at the International Space Station on November the 16th. Thirty-three, 
This is Mission Control Houston. We're now uh, past the 14-minute flight mark of the Soyuz spacecraft as it heads toward the International Space Station, a two-day rendezvous profile. Space Station currently orbiting over the South Atlantic on a northeasterly track toward the west coast of Africa at an altitude of 251 statute miles. Ontario, how are you doing there? Doing good? All of us. And it is great. Please continue working for page 50, ascend, descend book. Fatty, welcome. Soyuz crew members continuing to talk with their uh, colleagues in the Russian Mission Control Center in Karlov outside of Moscow as they uh, work through their checklist, uh, their post-launch and orbital insertion checklist. Coming up a little bit later today, the uh, Soyuz spacecraft will conduct the first of uh, several rendezvous burns. The first schedule for 10.52 a.m. Central Time and the second schedule for 11.45 a.m. Central Time. Delta was uh, 3 millimeters. Copy, impression and descent module. Those will uh, continue to refine the approach of the Soyuz to the International Space Station. The first uh, changing its velocity by 86 and a half miles an hour. The second uh, by 48 and a half miles an hour. A third uh, rendezvous burn is scheduled for 8:37 a.m. Central Time Thursday. And then automated rendezvous and docking activities will begin at 7.02 a.m. Central Time Friday. Okay, fine. We have just checked it. Copy. Now 16 and a half minutes past launch and everything working well aboard the Soyuz 29 spacecraft as it climbs toward, through orbit. You can see uh, microgravity being displayed by a little Kononenko with a pen and these uh, live views from the cabin. Of the uh, spacecraft known by the Antares call sign. They are ready to give you orbital parameters. I didn't copy. We are ready to copy. Period. Period. 88. Decimal 87. Inclination 51, 65. Altitude minimum 198, maximum 267, decimal 1. Copy. You can release uh, the uh, release uh, the belt, the strap, and open visors. 
Uh, this is 19. How do you read it? Uh, Vladimir Alexeyevich, we can hear you very well. Good evening. Uh, congratulations, guys, on uh, good insertion. You have a good orbit. Everything is open. We have no issues with telemetry or anything at all at this time. So we wish you best of luck. Uh, you are experienced people. I'm sure everything is going to go very well. Antares mission control must yes parameters complete complete everything is nominal no issues copy do not forget to turn off thermal sensors and perform a docking probe extension before the next before the next. Uh, uh, compass and the next compass is at 17:48. When is this one going to be over? We still have one minute. At 16:37, this compass is going to be over. This will be LOS. And the next one is 17:48. 17:48. And uh, what's the current uh, parameters? 880 right now on the control panel. Copy. So, uh, prepare for the test at the next compass and do not forget to extend the docking probe to initial position. Copy. Very good. Uh, all the best. Talk to you at the next compass. This is Mission Control Houston. We've lost our in-cabin views from the Soyuz spacecraft. Everything working very well, as you heard the crew told by the folks in Mission Control Moscow. On board the International Space Station, uh, we have some views of the crew inside the Destiny Laboratory module, where they uh, were watching the launch live. That was uplink from Mission Control Houston. Commander Dan Burbank, uh, along with uh, his Russian colleagues Anton Shkaplerov and Anatoly Ivanishin, getting a great view, uh, a television view of all the launch activities as uh, they, uh, their, their colleagues uh, headed for a uh, reunion that's going to take place on Friday when uh, the Soyuz spacecraft docks to the uh, Rosvet module docking port. Uh, that is on the Earth-facing side of the Zarya control module of the International Space Station. Again, uh, docking scheduled to occur at 9.22 a.m. Central Time on Friday. The uh, Soyuz crew undoubtedly bringing some uh, fresh fruit and uh, other delicacies to share with their crew for the hol with their crewmates for the holidays. And uh, Dan Burbank indicating uh, earlier this week that uh, he and his crewmates have uh, done a lot of decorating aboard the International Space Station and are ready to give a warm holiday welcome to uh, Don Pettit, Ola Kononenko, and Andre Kuipers when they arrive.